In this video, we're going to focus on how to create a bar chart or stack bar chart with data sets stacked on top of each other with multiple colors when the data reaches a certain threshold in Chart.js. This question is from one of the viewers and it was and, it, and I had a video which was part one covering already a certain aspect of it. And now I'm going to do the hard way or the more advanced way, which is part two. But if you want to look at it, it was in this video here. And in this video here, we had Tutor Plus asking for this, and specifically with the thresholds here. So I'm not, for some reason, I'm not able to see the full item, but you get the point. Here. Basically, it was this. Uh, he would like to have a uh, stacked chart, and with it, uh, when it hits with multiple colors, when the data reaches a certain threshold, 0 to 40, color red, 41 to 70, color green, and 71 to 100. At that moment, it will become also color, color green. I think he meant here yellow and green, most likely. So let's start and explore this. What we did. And right now we did here, and this was the hard-coded way, or not even hard-coded way, it was the version where I calculated these data in a certain matter. Please check uh, video one to understand what I did there. This video here is going to make the soft for, or more flexible data because sometimes you have no access to modify these data like here. For what I did here was basically 12 and then here this was an incremental of 5. However, we did 12 plus 5 would be 17 and we, we calculated that and put it in here. The reason why is because of this overlap here in the stack. But imagine you don't want to overlap in the stack or maybe you want to have uh, transparent background colors. In that case, these overlap of the stack is not possible. And you can see here the values are now changing here. So if I do this in false, you will pay attention again, you will see the difference. If I save that, refresh, there you are, you can see this was now we're back to 77, while just it was somewhere in the 150 range. Alright, so this is very important. So we're going to put it on true now. We're forced to put it on true and we're going to work on it. So let's get ready and do this part here. So here's a fair share warning. This is a quite uh, array intensive version here. And this is the only reason why I would recommend the first part if you don't understand arrays. All right, let's start and work on this. So what we're going to do here is the following. We're going to create an array. And to do this, we need to have the constant of the data value that we made here below. So imagine here, because right now what I did was 12, and it was 17, but in reality this was 5. So we have to do here 12, 5, and then 17 minus 47 is 30, 30, and then comma. If we go down here, 77, so this is also 30 as a value. So this is the original value. However, if you would do this value and you compare it with your color values here, we would always hit somewhere in red or in maybe in the yellow if this would be above a certain value. So you can see this is why what we have to do here now is we have to add up these on each other, but we need to calculate them with a array value. So let's start and do this immediately. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new constant and this constant is called the threshold value and the threshold value is simply this just very straightforward what is the original value or what is the real value if you plus them together but what we want to do is we want to plus the first one will be just single of 12 and then we need to plus we need the 17 and then we need to plus another one and then we have to plus them again here the total for the last one so that's what we're going to do now and we're going to do it programmatically with an array so we're going to create a for loop and this for loop will have an iteration here, or an i was that. And iteration means to repeat yourself or loop multiple times. So in, in our case, i equals zero, and we keep on looping i as long as data value dot length is bigger than i, meaning this is four. So basically, as long it will loop at least four times because it starts at zero. Remember that. All right. And then we say here i incremental. Increase it incrementally with plus one. So there we have it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create here a new constant, and this will be a slice. Why are we going to use array slice? Array slice is designed to duplicate an array without modifying the original array. Remember, we don't want to modify the original array because if we do that, we are not able to calculate anymore with the items that we have. So I want to make sure you know that. All right. 
So what we're going to do now is the following. We have here the data. We're going to give it the data sliced. And data slice is simply this. We will get the data value. And this data value will be dot slice. Very straightforward. And we're going to slice it. And the starting point will be zero, which is the first index element or first uh, uh, the first element or index zero all right and then we say where do we end well it will be i which is the iteration but this is zero so if it will end at zero it means it will not calculate anything at all so we say i plus one. Oh, sorry plus number one once we do this and we do a, a console.log we will start to get the right arrays that we need to sum up so if i save this now refresh open up developer tab you can see here now we have four arrays specifically we look, we look four times and you can see the arrays are exactly in the way we want them array three have three data points array two have two and array one one all right straightforward now we can sum them correctly so what we're going to do here is now we're going to create a constant and we say data sliced sum which makes sense because it's the sum value of our sliced arrays. So what we're going to do here is we say data sliced. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is not data sliced, but it is data slice. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, this is, it is data sliced. I, I'm confused with something else. Let's get this one here, data slice, which is this constant, of course. I'm thinking about this. Don't do that. We don't have to slice it again. We just need to get the sliced data point or the sliced uh, constant. Get that, and then we have here, we say dot reduce. With reduce, we're going to sum them together, but the reduce is a nameless function, and this function contains two values, which is the total, comma, and the number. What is the total? Well, the total will be zero by default, and then we're going to plus it based on this here, or sorry, based on the sliced array. Remember, it depends on how many data points it has. So once we do this, we have this here. Uh, let me make sure that we have everything correctly. I am putting my curly brackets on the wrong location because I need to put the curly brackets between here. Remember that. All right. So between here, now we put here a semicolon. Between here, we're going to say the following. We want to return the following. And the return is total plus num. So what is this really doing? It's well, simply this. It will start to add up the values depending on the sliced array so you can see here if it's 12 it's just only the total is 0 plus num is 12 all right however if we have the second one would be 5 12 and 5 it will do the following it says total 0 plus num and num is 12 all right that's then equals 12 and then it will loop again 12 plus 5 equals 17 etc etc so if we have this here, once we have this, we can push this specific value into our threshold value array. So we say here, threshold value array dot push, to push the value, slice sum. So once we have this, now we have that. If you want to double check what's going on here, you can just say here, console log, console.log, and here, Grab the new threshold value, put it in there. Oh, just to make sure I want to be outside of the loop, in order to create all confusion. All right. Once I have this, save this, refresh. You can see now we have 12, 17, 47, and 77. That is exactly the values we had before. So this is correct. First part is done. Now with these values, we can easily compare. All right. If you are below 40, it should be red. Are you between? 40 and 70 it becomes yellow and if you are above 70 it becomes red or green sorry so let's start and work on that part now for that we're going to create a new constant and this constant will be called the trash hole but in color since we need to have that one but we don't have any values in the threshold color yet because we need to compare that based on our threshold value so here same same process for loop we're going to create a for loop i equals zero and then here, i, we keep on looping the i as long as the threshold value has a certain length, which is here, it has four value or data points, meaning it will loop again four times, exactly same with data value here. And then here, we can say, of course, here, uh, the incremental value. Then we have here the following. 
what we're going to do is now this. We're going to say here the if statement that we had here. However, our if statement will be smaller now, and I know that this was so, uh, this was what we call not dry because it was too many times. However, most of the information we could almost use again. But we can cut away this now. This is not necessary. This is far too long now. Why? We already have the threshold value here. So we say here the following. Make an if statement. And we say if threshold value, but then this is the array, remember? So i is 0. If this one is smaller than 40, if that is the case, well, we can do, I'll just put a space here between, that looks nicer, and then we say here, if that's the case, then we want to push the certain value, we say here, threshold color dot push, and what are we going to do here then, basically, we're going to push the color red. Very straightforward, nothing fancy. Then we're going to, we can basically copy this, we're going to do this, and then here we need to make a if statement. Remember here, if we previously we didn't do a if statement with the between, but now we are forced to do it. Why? Because if you have let's say 40, and you say only this is 70, if it's below 70, it's yellow. This will give you an error, or this will give you a double push because this condition is true because it's red. Let's say you have something that is uh, uh, well, any kind of value, well, or doesn't matter so much. I guess realize it, it might not be. However, it doesn't matter, just to make sure, I want to make sure that this is a between value. I just realized that probably we have not a real issue here. Well, oh no, sorry, it would, it might be. If you had to have, for example, 35 as a value, let's say we have 35. This is red, condition true. And then here, 35, is it yellow? Condition true, because it's below 70. So we need to do it here, a between value, we say here, if or equal, if it's, larger or equal to 40 and if our threshold value we have to put it again here is smaller than 70 in this case yellow all right very important sorry don't uh, what i just said you can ignore it because this is the one most important one because you need to have the between one here so the final one is eventually if we are equal or bigger or sorry, bigger or equal. Make sure equal sign is at the last. This is the way it works. In that case, we do green. All right, so once we have this here, and we can start to work with the colors here, we can save this now. And once we save this, I'll just put here a semicolon, and then we can do here, let's get the threshold value. Oh, I'll copy the threshold value, put it down here, so we can compare them. And then we also do another one, this will be threshold color. Once we have this saved, put it here, save this, refresh. You can see here now, this is all correct. 12 is red, 17 is red, 47 is yellow, and 77 is green. So this is exactly correct. We get four data points here, no more, and so we don't have any trouble here. All right, so now we have this here. We don't need the value anymore. Why? We just get this point here. Because we are already stacking them based on the stack command here. So we don't have to use the uh, threshold value, but we will get the data value. So this is the data value will be used. So where are we going to use it? We're going to use it here. We say data. This equals the data value. And for now here, currently, this is be hard-coded. I guess I covered the most important one, this one here, I might cover in the future just to make this soft coded as well. However, I just want to make sure that we have the most complicated part here above covered. All right. And then this here, all of this data here can be all removed. So we can put in the background here. We have to put in here. And then what's also important, I realized, make sure this is a bracket between here. Why? This is an array value. Very important. If you don't have an array value, it will not work. It'll give you an error. But this one doesn't have to be an array value. So I'm going to just cut, uh, remove everything here that we don't need and just work on making it nice. There we are. Uh, we can say here, same story, comma, and this will be data value one. And here probably, well, we can just copy this. Here, what are we going to get? Well, straight for the threshold value here. And I don't want to have these brackets, no need. Yes, only this. 
All right, make this number one. Let's copy all of this here and remove all of this excess data here. Now we have these here as well. Got that. And then here, this is probably redundant. Remove that. Finally, here we have all of this information. Just delete this and put it in here. We make this number three. Why number three? Because the index is zero. Number two, number two. And if I save this now, refresh, and now it gets exactly the same here. And the reason why you want this maybe is imagine you want to have a background color that is transparent. It will not overlap each other anymore. So let's, we can even do it like that. We could give it a transparent color. And you will see exactly what I'm talking about here. So let's make this a RGBA. And then we say here, um, 255 comma, oh, oh is that comma? Uh, that's a dot, sorry. Dot 255. And I realize that this should not be bracket, sorry. It should be this. All right, parentheses. Is that, oh, I think it's comma, sorry. Comma, comma, 255, comma, 0. Point, let's say 0. 0.5. Let's make this a bit more space because that looks far more easier to read. All right, we've got this now. Exactly the same here. And here is yellow. I am not certain what is the official yellow color. Doesn't matter so much for now. Let's make this, well, yellow will, might be Maybe red and green, I have no idea. So this is RGB, let's put this on zero. And then finally here, the green color. Uh, let's delete all of this excess here. All right, make sure you have the single quotation here because it's a string value. And finally, this one would be uh, no red and no blue. Then we only have green color. If I save this now, we have this here. You can see here, I am not sure what happens to red. Let's double check here, did I miss something? 255 push. Uh, Alright, so I, for some reason I'm missing a value here. Oh, sorry, of course, 255. If you have this, mix it all white. Save this. Now, this is only red color. Refresh here. Now we have a red transparent. Because what will happen if you would say stack false? This was the issue here. They will be stacked on each other, and you can see now these come. It overlaps each other, and the Transparency is not visible. So this was the entire process. It was a long process, eventually and quite complicated, but this is basically the way to do it with a, a stack bar chart. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.